The revelation this week that the CEO of Athena Health attacked his former wife during a divorce 14 years ago has raised questions about how the company is handling that incident and what, if anything, it should do about it. Jonathan Bush has since apologized, and in a statement, the company said the following, quote, We are aware that Mr. Bush has made amends with his ex-wife and has shown deep remorse. As a company, we are fully committed to a safe and respectful work environment for all our employees. So far, Athena Health's board has remained silent on the issue, and Mr. Bush declined our request to appear today on this program to discuss this story. Susie Welch is a leadership and management expert and the co-founder of the Jack Welch Management Institute. She is live with us today from New York City. Susie, it's nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Thanks. So I read the company statement. The statement said it found out about this uh, story uh, over the weekend when the Daily Mail out of the UK um, published it. It has the statement. Otherwise, it's been fairly silent. The board hasn't spoken. What should happen here? Well, something should be said at this point beyond that kind of mamby-pamby, um, jargony statement that was made. This is an incident uh, that occurred while he was CEO. Um, and uh, apparently the company didn't know about it at the time, if we're to believe them. Now, it's sort of a interesting, what makes this story very interesting is that there are several mitigating factors that make it different than other stories. One is uh, he has shown a lot of what feels to be sincere remorse. And he, there was a statement from his ex-wife, the, the wife that he had the uh, altercation with, that was very, sort of went beyond forgiving. She said this should not be an incident that defines his character or his leadership or his, you know, how he is as a father. They really seem to have reconciled. But the context here is where it gets very complicated in that Athena Health is in the middle of what could be a takeover bid. And right now, how strong the leader is, how strong the CEO is, how much faith the employees and the and the street have in the CEO become become really important. This is not sort of normal times for this company. And so I think that they need to get out in front of the story and start talking about how the company is handling it. Yeah, there are also obvious questions about where this information came from and yeah. how it was leaked, if you want to call it that, um, in the first place. It, it also raises questions, I, I guess, Susie, in, in what part of a CEO's personal life should remain personal. Um, uh, this did not happen on the job. It did not involve any Athena Health employees. Is it relevant? Is a CEO's uh, personal life relevant to how they can perform their job in, in this day and age? It's a tricky question. It, it is, and um, it, it, this is not so much a question of sort of personal life, but character, this is actually an offense where he could have been arrested. Okay, had she picked up the phone and called the police, um, this, it, he, he could have been arrested and, and charges filed and, and, and so forth. I think that um, there is personal life sort of, you know, are you going through divorce? It's not a criminal sort of situation. That You can consider that something that's private, but this sort of steps over that line. That having been said, uh, uh, people have skeletons in their closet. Terrible things happen. He admitted it. He owned it. They reconciled. Uh, and apparently there's no other um, incidents of it. it. It becomes relevant now in the new context of uh, heightened awareness about um, uh, relationships between men and women. It becomes very heightened in that his leadership has to be extremely strong to weather what's, what's ahead in terms of the changes in the ownership of the company. If it happened more recently, you're saying we, we could have an entirely different outcome, let's say a year or two ago rather than 14. Absolutely. And if his wife didn't come out, his former wife didn't come out and say this doesn't define him, he's changed, he's in a way she's saying he redeemed himself, oh, we have a very good relationship now, uh, it would be very different. But I, mean, I think it's a sort of a cautionary tale for all uh, executives about what is private, what you think is private. There are very few secrets anymore. Um, and this kind of quote unquote secret, this kind of experience in your past, if you've not spoken to your board about it, uh, perhaps this is the time to think, gee, I don't want this coming out as a surprise to everybody. Let me ask you lastly, if, if the board, for example, comes to you as a, as a management and leadership consultant and says, what should we do? Um, should this gentleman remain our, our CEO? What do you tell them? Well, you know, there are questions about whether or not he should remain CEO regardless of this. I mean, there have been questions around the, the stock's performance, around execution, about major initiatives, about uh, management turnover. And I think that the, I would advise the board to sort of separate these two things. Do they have faith in his character to go forward, given this incident and what's happened since it? 
since then. And if the answer is yes, we, we do believe in him as our leader, then the next question is, given what we're hearing and how the stock is performing, should he be our leader? But not to conflate these two, um, uh, uh, two incidents happening at the same time. Susie, we appreciate your insight as always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.